Thank you for tuning into our seller interview series. Up today, we've got an affiliate business for sale in the online marketing niche. Created in January 2016, this business makes $3,164 per month in net profit, and the listing number for the site is 44210. We do these interviews to give potential buyers more information about both the seller and the sites they're looking to purchase. We hope these insights are helpful for you in making a buying decision. We've got the seller with us today to go through the business and cover everything from niche selection to traffic and monetization. How are you doing today, Richard? I'm very good, Jake. Good to speak to you. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today. Where are you calling in from? Norwich, England, UK. I did think I was detecting a little bit of an accent. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's not too strong. It's pretty messed up. A lot of people don't know where I'm from. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I was born and raised in Iowa in the United States where supposedly people don't have accents. So having a little bit of British accent is pretty cool. There you go. Personally, I can find them often very annoying, but um, mine's not too strong. So oh, over here in the <laughs> states, over here in well, the states, true. we think that they're really cool. Well, that's true. That's true. That's true. I'm, I'm the opposite. But, uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Before we dive into the questions that I have for you, I want to go ahead and run through a quick summary of the business. Again, the business was built in January of 2016, has a monthly revenue of $3,603, expenses of $439 to make for a net profit of $3,164 which is generated on a six-month average. Included in the sale of this business are the domain, site content files, social media accounts, content templates, link building SOPs, and an email list. Richard, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Yeah, sure. So I've been involved in online entrepreneurship for the last eight years. The first five years was pretty much me doing service-based stuff, marketing stuff, doing SEO for clients and basically trying to make any kind of income that I could. And then once I got good enough, the last three years have been about building up my own web properties. And for the last couple of years, I've been uh, selling them. And how did you come up with the idea to start this business in the online marketing niche? Yeah, so it came out of the service offering that I had. So this niche is around helping people to convert traffic in terms of of opt-ins and also to directly convert into paying customers. And so I was doing that for other people as kind of a priced service package. And so I bought the domain back in 2014 and was doing that for a couple of years and realized that you know, service business is not for me. And I was starting to make a little bit of affiliate commissions by recommending the software that I was setting up for people. And just uh, after, you know, basically the biggest moment was uh, listening to the audio book Built to Sell and realizing that service wasn't for me. I needed to standardize. I wanted to be able to sell a business. And the affiliate route really seemed like the way to go. So from the end of 2015, starting at the January start of uh, 2016, I decided to flip this into a pure affiliate business and focus on the content and converting people into paid affiliate customers for the software that the software is our SaaS businesses with recurring income, which means recurring affiliate commissions. So uh, Richard, is that how the business primarily makes money or are there any other streams of revenue for the business? It is. It's 99% affiliate commissions and 1% selling a product that is teaching people how to how to better convert their traffic. So it's a paid product. We take payment through Stripe, but it's uh, you know it's, it's only 1% of the income. 99% is just pure affiliate commissions that reoccur every month. Is the product that you are selling to you know your own product? It is not. It is created by the main software product that we promote. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So why are you selling the business today rather than growing it yourself? Yeah, so I sold the business for the first time in March last year through one of your competitors. And that was a nice exit for me. I actually sold my first business through you guys in the summer of of 2016. And uh, that, you know, it was very cool. And I wanted to do that again. So March 2017, I, after transitioning this into an affiliate play, I sold it. And the owner, the way that he likes to do it is to try and bring the seller back on to with a chunk of equity in the business to continue building it up and to sell on for a bigger multiple bigger asset price and so i'm speaking on behalf of the main owner of the business so i started the domain um, you know I, i founded it the business and i've continued working on it over the last 10 11 months and we've got it to the point where we've doubled the asset value and we're looking to sell again so if someone buys the business today, they'll get 100%. They'll get both of your shares. Yes. Okay. Correct. So 
being the primary business starter, you may not be the primary owner now, but you, Mm -hmm. assuming you have the majority of the knowledge on the business. Yes. When you started the business back in January of 2016, how long did it take to reach a steady profit level? Yeah, so just having a look at the numbers now. So, you know, with the service offering prior, it was starting to build up affiliate commissions. So in January 2016, the total revenue for that month was over $800. So it had already established, you know, proof of concept. I knew that, you know, focusing on affiliate was the way forward. So 2016, January, it was over $800. And then for, in terms of understanding the growth of the business, the January 2017, it became two and a half thousand dollars. And so I've been able to grow it from that point. So, you know, the first month I would call it, you know, this is the the affiliate business, there's no more service offering, there's no more client work. It already had a, a base affiliate level. Would you say that the business is primarily run by you currently, or do you have other time being put in by the other owner or any other employees that you have? Yeah, there's no, the other owner has not put in any time. That's on me. And there are no contractors or any staff involved. It's uh, just me working, you know, a couple of hours a week on maintenance and research and, and the odd email for any new affiliate offer that the companies we promote have created. So what are you currently doing in terms of social media marketing? And branching off into that uh, with the email list that you have, there are mm-hmm. over... 20,000 subscribers on that list. So can you just talk about the marketing strategy for the business right now? Yeah, sure. I mean, the way I would think about it is basically there's two main streams, the search traffic, and then there's the email list, the main channels. We do a little bit of social media marketing, but it's all just automated through Meet Edgar. And so that's not a channel that that we have focused on, that I focused on. I don't think that, you know, that will bring any kind of material impact. So I focus on making sure that the the rankings are holding steady. And the email list is, you know, a great asset. And when new promotions come along, you can email the list and expect a nice bump in, in revenue. With all these products, there's kind of like a four to six week delay in terms of payouts. So, you know, there's an affiliate promotion, you know, once or twice a year, these companies, they do big launches, which is nice. And you kind of see that in the increased monthly recurring revenue, like one to two months after that. We can certainly give like an email list to 20,000 people. That's, you know, the business over, over the time it's been an affiliate business has certainly taken in that number of leads through the opt-ins that it has. But I like to keep the list tightly pruned to 5,000 subscribers and under in order to, you know, have, uh, you know, the best opt open rates and click-through rates and, all, and also to keep at a price level within the software that we use, Drip, <laughs> so we don't go over the 5,000 level and that seems to work. So... Yeah, if you wanted just, uh, you know, to collect the largest number of, you know, to grow the biggest list possible, that's certainly, you know, something that that could be done. And the, you know, every month the list will grow, but I keep it pruned to under 5,000. May I ask, why do you try to keep it pruned to under 5,000? I mean, obviously, the goal is to have a highly targeted list full of, you know, good leads. But why 5,000? I mean, what if you yeah. get 1,000 new good leads? I mean, are you going to trim some good leads or will you expand the limit to 6,000? No, for sure. I mean, if it's going to impact on the business, then I would uh, not be doing that. I'm having a look inside Drip now. Basically, my filter is if people have not opened or clicked any of the last 15 emails, and I'm having a look now at what that would be, then um, I just get rid of them. I don't think there's any particular use of having them on the list. And right now, there would be another 500 people that would be pruned. <laughs> so that's basically what I do. But the new owner would have the entire list they could upload in terms of Facebook retargeting and you know have a much larger number of people to reach out to that way. All these people have opted in to be on the list and we have the entire database, but I try and keep it, you know, under that price level in order to, you know, keep expenditure down. And also I just, you know, if people are not opening emails, I don't think there's any point in in continuing to have them as subscribers. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. So now uh, moving on into the future, where do you see a new owner taking this business and growing it? Yeah, so I really haven't been focusing on this. I have other projects that have uh, really got my attention, in particular projects around cryptocurrencies. And so no new content has been created since 
I would say April, May of 2017, when I wrote a post about one of the new products that we promote. So when I that was a new software product that I wasn't promoting when I first sold the business that has now added 20% revenue and, and profit to the business. So there's very few number of pieces of content and pages on the site. They perform very well. I prefer to have less content doing well and, and much larger guides rather than I'd rather have like five very long and established and well-ranking pages rather than 50 pages targeting longer tail keywords. That That's the way that I prefer to structure it. And so nothing new has been created since then. It's just a case of you know, looking at, at rankings and new keywords and, and potentially changing some headings, changing a, a paragraph or two, and just trying to just maintain rankings and seeing what competitors are doing in terms of new links that they're building and trying to go after some of those. So in terms of new content, that has hasn't happened. And so what I would recommend in order to, you know, double the business again, it would be to look to include more and different types of software. You know, I get emails all the time from people doing cold email approaches who have new SaaS companies with affiliate commissions, with affiliate programs saying, would you like to promote? And I just don't have the time to think about how that could fit in. So I would say, you know, increase the number of software products that it's promoting. I mean, right now we are generating income from one, two, three, four. So to increase that number and to increase the content around those new products and also to a lot more link building. The link building that I've done, it's not been particularly active. It's links have, have naturally come in and also just looking at what competitors are doing and and trying to you know, go after those links or leave comments on posts that link to their pages. I've not actively done a, a, like a, a link building strategy that sent out you know hundreds of emails asking for links. It's been a, a sniper approach rather than a shotgun. So there's not been any kind of real investment in, in link building. And, and so if I was to continue... If I were to focus on this business, I would look to do all, all of that. Are there any major risks associated with this business or this type of business that you feel an interested buyer should be aware of? I mean, it is predominantly in terms of traffic, you know, dominant on search traffic, organic search. And so that's the case with, you know, the vast majority of these types of affiliate sites. And so, you know, it, it could be a smart thing to try and diversify away from that. But then there is the email list with the software products that I promote. With one of them, I was able to get into the top 10 leaderboard for a launch last summer due to just this 5,000 level pruned list of uh, super active, keen and relevant people. So you're able to do really well with these affiliate launches from this list. So that well, it was nothing to do with any search traffic that was from the list. So it is diversified in that respect. But, you know, the business is search and the email list. And then, you know, the connections, the some, some referral traffic and some of the backlinks obviously help. So, yeah, there's no more risk than any other type of affiliate business. The benefit of this is that it's recurring income. So even if search were to disappear, you know, the, the recurring income would live on for a large number of months. The churn rate for these pretty low. If the buyer, you will get access to obviously all the dashboards. You know, if you're interested in a discussion about that, you know, I can share screenshots of, of the churn rates and the metrics inside these affiliate areas. Some of them are very sophisticated. So there is that, you know, you could then look to reinvest some of the money in paid advertising or think, you know, you would have time to recover basically. So from that respect, you know, it's a lot safer than if it was uh, like an Amazon affiliate business where if traffic goes, then revenue goes completely. So for me, it's a uh, low, you know, from my perspective, it's low risk and it's passive and income that I know how to create. You mentioned Amazon affiliate. Do you feel like there's an opportunity to have both affiliate revenue as you currently have expand on the number of products that you refer to, but then also get on Amazon affiliate for, or Amazon associate for this business? Uh, no, <laughs> there wouldn't be, a, there wouldn't be a way of, of doing that. That makes sense. The traffic, the audience, people are interested in software products that can help them make more money in their business. And, you know, that's what the business does, does well at. There'd be no, it wouldn't make sense to consider Amazon associate for this now. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. So would you commit to a non-compete? Uh, yes, of course. Yep. 
And there's obviously a lot to know about the different types of software that can help you grow your business. There's a lot to know about this business and the ins and outs. Are you willing to sit down and walk someone through the ins and outs of the business? How much support are you willing to offer during that transition period? Yes, very happy to do that. And yep, whatever is required, basically, whatever is that you guys are standard, I'm, I'm very happy to do, whether that's 30 days or a little bit longer. Very happy to sit down, have Skype calls and explain how things work in terms of how the business converts the traffic into paid affiliate customers, what the different software products do and how their affiliate programs work. So as much support as is required by the new buyer. Awesome. Thank you. And obviously, the best case scenario is that someone comes along and offers 100% cash offer of what you're looking for for the business. But if that didn't happen, are you open to negotiating things like, for instance, an earnout? From the answer that I've got from the majority owner, we're not able to offer that. We do not want to offer any earnouts. If the purchase price was more, then I think that would make sense. But still at this price bracket, I think from our perspective, that's not something that we want to do. Okay. So thank you so much. I have one final question for you. But before we get to that, I want to go ahead and run through a quick summary of the business. The business was built in January of 2016, has a monthly revenue of $3,603, expenses of $439 to make for a net profit of $3,164, which is generated on a six-month average. Included in the sale of this business are the domain, site content and files, social media accounts, content templates, link building SOPs, and an email list. So to me, this business really seems like a business that is very low time commitment. As you mentioned, you're not putting very much time into the business at all at the moment. And it's recurring passive income. And there are definitely ways to grow the business. But Richard, in your own words, you know, elevator pitch me 30 second best (laughs) pitch on why someone should purchase this business. For me, you know, it's it's a cash machine and it requires very low level of involvement, of support. Well, there is no support. That's, the, you know, the beauty of affiliate businesses are that you're promoting other people's software and all of the pain in terms of, of dealing with customers and support is completely taken away. So this, for me, is a good business to really understand how online businesses work, how they can, you know, best convert traffic into leads through opt-ins how you can then have email sequences that upsell and promote a bunch of other products. I've got it set up in a very good way in terms of doing that. And, you know, there's, you wouldn't need to learn everything right at the start because things will continue very, very nicely. So it's not something that you'd have to get up to grips with very quickly. The business just ticks along and it's a nice cash flow business for a new owner and it has the potential to grow even further. There are just a lot of different ways to go about growing the business more like we spoke about. But I mean, I just another point I want to hammer home is that this business has an email list with, you know, over 20,000 names, but the core list is hammered down to, you know, 5,000 highly targeted, highly responsive names. And that alone can help you just grow the business even more if you utilize that email list and utilize social media and everything in just proper ways. I agree. Yep. (laughs) Richard, thank you so much for taking the time with me today all the way across the pond. Good stuff. Good to talk, Jake. Thank you very much. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. And if you want more information, the link will be below the video that will take you to this marketplace listing. If you're watching this on the listing site and want more information, become a depositor today. When you make the deposit, one of our business advisors will be in contact with you and you'll be given everything you need to review this business. Have a great day.